Your ability to persuade others is one of the most powerful resources you will ever discover. During this eye-opening podcast, you'll join Wayne Sutton as you uncover the secrets of influence based upon science and proven in the real world. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Your Persuasion Coach, Wayne Sutton here, and I'm so glad to have you on board. For this episode, we're going to do an interview with one of my friends, one of my mentors, somebody that I look up to and have for a number of years, and really excited because you're on this podcast because you want to learn how to influence yourself, influence others, impact the world, and this book, well, this author has released a book just released becoming the you that you want to be dr jeremy lopez thank you so much for jumping on board with me man hey man it's always good to be with you guys and your amazing audience well we appreciate you really do and we were talking you know a little pre-show talk and we we're talking about the last interview we did had a lot of uh had a lot of views so guys if you're uh, a lot of downloads so if you're listening to this and you want to learn more about jeremy then go back and find our past archives and, and go through. Uh, in fact, I tell everybody, if you're listening to a podcast and you like the podcast, just go ahead and binge. We binge watch Netflix. We binge watch Hulu. <laughs> I'm on a show on Hulu now and I'm like, I've got to go to bed, but one more show. But binge, <laughs> go back to the beginning of Your Persuasion Coach and just binge listen and uh, you'll pick up some nuggets. Jeremy, becoming the you that you want to be. I love the title. The, the, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to read the book. But just looking at the cover, mm -hmm. like, it's inspirational. Um, <laughs> what is becoming the you that you, what, what drew, I know, I know you, but I want the audience to hear mm -hmm. what is behind this book. What was your thought process or what is in your heart when it comes to this book? Well, you know, Wayne, I'm glad you asked that, man. And once again, it's always good to be with you guys in the audience. And, uh, I, you know, there's nothing more encouraging and better in life than hearing great reports coming from people. And that's why I think me and you connect with each other so good, because I hear so many reports of, you know, listening to Wayne and, you know, I read this by Wayne. And so this is why it's my honor, first of all, to be with you guys, man. It really is. And uh, but I'll tell you this, Wayne, I wrote this book on becoming the you that you want to be, because in my life coaching sessions with a lot of my clients, I think the idea for them is feeling so distraught because of other people's opinions that maybe they fed into. And one of the things that I really share even within the book is, and a lot of my podcasts, is I deal with the fact that anytime you come into an agreement with an opinion and uh, a, you know, an option, uh, an idea of anything outside of you, really what you're saying is you're sort of entering into that covenant like you would in your marriage. You know, when you get to the altar and you say, you know, do you take this man? Do you take this woman? You know, I do. Because anytime we come into that, that, that communion or that realm of covenant, what happens is we begin to engage in the ideas and becomes a part of us. And I think so many people nowadays are so messed up because we're so attached to everybody else's vibration, everybody else's voice, everybody else's opinions. And really the idea is we don't allow ourselves to realize they're nothing more than just opinions. And they're, they're basically based on ideas, not even based on anything grounded or founded. And so we turn up looking uh, at ourselves thinking, I don't know, you know, who I am, wh what's going on in my life, you know, like, what the crap, you know, help me, God, you know, what's happening. And so a lot of my clients that come to me, we deal with the fact of what do you want to be? And I think even no matter really what religious background a person has, a lot of times, a lot of people are scared. They're scared because do I actually have a say so within the realm of my life? Do I have, you know, the okay from, from God to actually engage in a desire to engage in something I would like to do in my life. And truthfully, statistically, probably, in fact, they've said it really between 65 to actually 75. That's a big, big number between 65 to 75% of Christians actually live their life in fear because they're scared of the fact that I actually am, I can't make a have a say so in my life. I have to just follow the leader. And the truth is, it's like you look at God and Jesus and you think Jesus did what the father told him to do. But the also thing, the awesome thing is there's an, there's an, an exploration of journey that Jesus had on this planet. And while he was here and I look at my life and thinking, what if God gave us this amazing experience and journey of our own reality to say, look, you co-create, you have fun, 
and find out really what, what makes you in this life. And I think we forget that life is our teacher. And so the reason why I wrote the book is I wanted to be able to sort of counteract the fear of people to say, look, you actually do have a say so. And do you know why? Because it's your life. It's your life. It's not your mom's life. And really, if you think about it from a religious background or point of view, we're scared to say this is my life. And I think it's wise that we begin to awaken to the reality that this is my world, my life, my sphere of influence. You know, in other words, my my you know my field uh, that I've been given to to plant, uh, to to reap, to uh, engage in life and engage in quality things of my choosing. But that's a fearful thing for many of us to say that this is my life. Yeah, I, I love I love how you said that because you really look at. Let's go back to Jesus. The, the Bible says he grew in favor. He grew yeah. in favor with man and God. So he had a journey, definitely. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is uh, is religious, spiritual, or not, I think I think the this is my life can mm -hmm. sometimes be ignored because e even if they don't feel like a divine calling, people are drawn to replicate the family they grew up in. You know, if somebody was middle income from yep. this, did he, they just follow that or because there's something within them, I think sometimes they want, there's more, there's more, there's more, then they totally reject that. And I think we mm -hmm. need to have a balance there. And I, I love your thoughts. You wrote the book, <laughs> but I think we need to, <laughs> I can learn from my traditions. I can learn from my background. I can learn from this environment. Yeah. But I, I take that as a lesson, not necessary a prison. Exactly. I agree. I agree. And one of the things that I actually incorporate in the book is ideas that people can sort of explore to find their own ideas, their own desires, their own opinions. You know, one of the chapters in the book is called uh, Chains is a Choice. And we've heard the old saying before, you know, uh, you know, happiness is a choice, which we know is 100 percent true. You know, we have that power to choose. Do I want to be happy today? Do I want to be miserable? Do I want to complain or do I want to? Basically, you know, speaking to my day, some encouraging words to others, to myself. And so I think we realize that change is not something we sit down and just wait on to happen. I mean, change is so evident. Change is something that we choose. And if you think about it, today when I woke up, I chose change because I chose to say, I want to do, you know, I want to be interviewed by Wayne Sutton. I want to, I, I want to be able to go to lunch here today. Hey, you know what? I'm going to contact this. And hey, today I'm going to be able to write a book on this. So change really is just there waiting on us. We, we, but we've been sort of conducive to waiting on change. When change is saying, I'm here, I'm always like energy flowing. Either you get into the river uh, uh, and flow with me or you don't. But I think life is really in call, it's calling us to say, what do you really want to do with your life? When, where do you want to be in 10 years? What do you want to be today? Uh, you know, one of the things I, I'll tell you this, Wayne, one of the things I incorporated also is in my podcast and within this book is choosing three things throughout the day that you know can really revolutionize and change your life and other, other lives. So I would say, you know, if people can get the idea, what are three things today that I can actually make a change Today, to where tonight when I go to sleep, I can see where I've already sort of made a dent in today that I know will continue to evolve and grow to where even when I wake up in the morning, I've already produced something. I mean, think about uh, think about revenue. Think about the idea of investing, investing in stock markets, investing in this company or that company. We do that, and yet we go about our lives. And we look from day to day, week to week, year to year. Hey, how much money have I, you know, have I, has, has that, you know, grown in? Oh, wow. Look, I've, I've gained a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. And yet, so it works by itself without your help once you invest. And so if you think about the idea of our lives is one of those three things we can do throughout the day is what can I do that can just sort of like evolve and grow into something to where every day I wake up, I don't even have to, have, I can be hands-free with it and know that it's constantly evolving and flowing. And that seems a little far-fetched for some people, but the truth is everything around you pretty much moves in, is in movement anyway. So things are already in movement, but the power that we have is to cause something to flow to where we can hands off the, you know, the idea and then wake up one day and say, hey, you know what, look, I've been gaining a couple thousand dollars and you have done nothing to do that, except make the choose to change to make an investment. And yet everything in our lives, really, we can choose change to invest in to where it grows within us. And we wake up tomorrow and we say, wow, I'm already different from what I've done yesterday. I love that. I love that. Three, I wrote that down. So 
Uh, I love doing these podcasts because I always pick up nuggets from you. So mm. three things, but you're right. I have, um, you know, my guilty pleasure, I guess, every morning's waking up and looking at my, my stocks. I look at my crypto mm-hmm. account. I, you know, I do a little forex <laughs> trading and I look and you're right. You see, wow, maybe it's just 50 bucks. Maybe it's 200 bucks. Maybe we lost $200, but when we see it growing <laughs> and yeah. uh, you're like, wow, that was pretty cool. I went to sleep, had this much money. I woke up with this much money, but it's more than that because it's also, what else did I do today? You know, if I exercise, yeah. I tell somebody, you jump on a, you jump and do, uh, you know, whether it's yoga, whether it's weight training, mm-hmm. or cardio, you don't see the results day one. You, you may feel tired. You may have an endorphin rush, but mm-hmm. It is that little bit of change. The body said, wow. The central nervous system said, wow, we worked this muscle. We better mm-hmm. rebuild it stronger for next time. And it's that progressive from that. And I agree. And one thing I picked up from one of my coaches, and uh, it's, it's one of those things that's hard to do every day, but, mm-hmm. but you have to do it, is that is finding somebody you can reach out to and say, hey, I appreciate you. And it's got to come from a place of the heart. And that yeah. sounds easy for the first five or seven days. But if you don't want to go back and get to the same people, who do you appreciate it? Maybe you've neglected. Maybe this just life happens. You know, we went mm-hmm. through a season, Jeremy, ourselves, where we kind of lost touch with each other. And I'm glad yeah. Yeah. we've, we've read communi- you know, communication has been built back in friendships. Is the friendship was still there. We just lost touch. So it's, yeah. just, <laughs> it's good that we do that. And I think that, so three things, I wrote that down. What am I going to do today? I also think it's very powerful because when you give your unconscious uh, a command, we're going to find three things today that's going to grow. Then the unconscious yeah. mind begins to look for that. You, you're training the reticular activating system. Say, let's find something important that we can invest in, not necessarily financially, but in other areas. That's awesome. That's awesome. I agree, man. I agree. Well, you know, let me say something about the three things. One of the things, one little client asked me one time, she said, what it can be one of those three things, you know, and I'm told, her, I said, think about it. You can join a class today. We can join a group on, I mean, Facebook has groups. I mean, what, you know, there's so many social media outlets that have groups. You can go and you can go on anything and say, I'm going to sign up today. I'm going to take this class. I'm going to sign up for this course today without even leaving your house. I mean, we're, we're in a time where I can stay home and become one of the wisest men ever by really engaging through the internet world of anyone I want to listen to. Anyone I want to watch, whatever I want to learn. If I want to learn about trees, if I want to learn how to, you know, plant a garden, if I want to learn how to put a car together, you know, I mean, I think about it. It's at our disposal. And one of the key things we've grew up with, uh, with from our parents is always, you know, hey, learn something new today, right? At the end of the day, before we go to sleep, usually it's what did you learn today at school? You know, what is that one thing? Yeah, yeah. It's like, what is that thing? That one thing. And if you think about learning one thing, think about, for example, a paradigm shift you do from learning one thing. I mean, when we're in school and we learn, let's say, for example, uh, I'm not a big math fan, but you learn addition, you learn subtraction, multiplication, division. You think about these things and all of a sudden it's like, you know what? My paradigm, my brain will never be the same as long as I live. The moment that knowledge gets into my brain from that moment to the day I die, probably 80 or something, hopefully years later, my, my brain has had a shift that will never return because that knowledge will always remain there. And the good thing and that's effective is I can take that knowledge of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I can take that into every single day of my life. And so when people ask me, I don't know how to, I don't know how to find myself. I said, well, first of all, you, you know, you're, you're, if you're right here, if you're alive, you don't have to find yourself. You're right here. Maybe <laughs> that's the misconception that maybe you've been learning in your religious background is you're not lost. You're actually right here. If you're six feet under, unfortunately, you're going to be a little lost right now because you're not not in touch with your body. But the idea today is you are here. You are at a place where you're grounded. And here's what's really interesting. People say, well, I need to get grounded in something. Think about it. Every person on this planet is grounded in something right now, whether it's good or bad or whether it's faulty or, or stable. Everyone is grounded in something. If you think of someone, let's say, for example, who's had three affairs and they divorced their wife and they say, man, I'm not grounded. Here's the key thing. You actually are grounded by that in which you've created. You are grounded in adultery or you're you're grounded in an affair. Think about that. So when we look at our lives, we have to look and say, you're grounded in something. It might not be what you want, 
but you need to at least acknowledge the power that you actually made a radical change in your life, not for the good, but guess what? It shows you your power that you have to undo that now and to build a new foundation. I think the key thing for many of us is realizing that that really none of us are lost and none of us actually are ungrounded. Not, you know, none of us can really look at the, ourselves in the mirror and say, I really don't have anything going for me. Sure you do. No matter what you're doing, if you're sitting at home all day long in COVID, for example, you're still doing something. You're still manifesting. And I think we have to get people back to the place to say, your life is an operation right now. The thing is you've lost connection and in touch because of maybe a religious theology or maybe because someone told you that if you want to find something, get over here or do this. But you have to begin to come into the place of awareness to say, I am actually doing something right now. And I am me right now. And I'm actually creating something right now. So once I acknowledge that energy, even if it's something negative, I can just shift it into something positive. But guess what? You are grounded in something you created. Absolutely. And what you said earlier was so good about knowledge. You learn one thing, one thing, because the fact that you learn addition as, as a school in elementary school, you've used the rest of your life. But many times people will only focus and only learn what their interest is, but sometimes you got to study outside of that because I call it that compound knowledge. And we know what compound interest does, but so mm -hmm. does compound knowledge. The fact that maybe I learned something or a way of learning even that really doesn't apply today, but seven, yeah. eight, 10 years from now, that one piece of knowledge can attach to another piece of knowledge and be the, it be really something that's groundbreaking. And yeah. that's the importance of knowledge is I'm, there's not a day that I don't read or listen to Audible mm -hmm. more than I read now, but I read or listen to Audible or, as you said, YouTube, a video on something and pick up something that will give me knowledge, will give motivation and lead me in the right direction. And that's what I love. In fact, let's take a moment and talk about your books because you've written more than a few. And what I love is you've got a way people can just receive your book. So I'm going to say, we're going to plug Jeremy Lopez for a second here. Tell us about your book program and how people can get a, I love this. They can get a book a month from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I, I'd love to talk about that. Yeah, actually, I write a book every month. And uh, the reason why is because I have some, once again, a dynamic team who really helps me, takes my writings, my audios, and really I plug in what I've learned that day. And here's the key thing even to me about reading and, and like you said, Audible, is whatever information I get that day, I am not going to waste it. If it's a knowledge on, you know, let, let's just be, just be real just for a moment before I grab into the book thing. Let's be real about it. We learn something new every day. So if you learn, this is going to sound funny, but here's the key. If I learn how to change a diaper with my baby today, guess what? I learned something from that one thing. I could write a book on it. Think about that. We, we, we think everybody, we assume because we judge every person on earth or, or a lot of people we should say, or, or more people or, or, you know, whatever than me actually knows things. And so I'm not going to waste my time writing on it. For me, I'm like, that's a person who will never prosper because everything I do in my day, if I change my baby's diaper. If I go to the drugstore and I run into someone I haven't seen in years, I'm carrying on a conversation with them and they tell me what they're doing throughout the day or what, you know, what the career is now. Guess what? It's still knowledge. I, I could even write a book on communication that you haven't, you know, spoken to someone in years. Think about everything. There's so much potential that we, that is knowledge that we could sell, we could give to people. So for me, when I write a book every month, it's literally based on what is it in that time period of my life, that month or those couple of weeks that really impacted my life? What is it that really made a paradigm shift within my brain? What is it that I, that I know something within that month was altered from my normal everyday daily grind routine and pattern? Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm like, you know what? I refuse to take and waste knowledge I've learned throughout the day. I refuse to waste that. If you think about, and I, once again, we'll get into this book, but if you think about the, the fact that that everything in, being in the kingdom of God is sowing and reaping, right? As long as your earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest, which is in Genesis. So, which basically for those of you, maybe that are not really at a place, maybe uh, you understand the, the Bible. It, it's a great concept because it's letting you know every day I'm giving and taking all day long. I'm either giving my thoughts or I'm receiving thoughts. I mean, I, you know, I, everything is give and take. So when, when we realize that we're on a planet where every single thing, a chair, a car, a cat, uh, you know, uh, a friend, everything has definition to it. 
And once you plug into that definition, what happens is, bam, I've got something I, could, I learned. I got something I could write about. I have something I could expand on. And so for me, I look every month and I say, what is it that month I've, I've, I've discovered maybe that was revelation to me or just impacted me with wisdom? So that's why I write a book every month. And the program actually is on my website, which is identitynetwork.net. And if they go to it, they're going to see at the top where it says hot off the press. I sort of like that title, hot off the mm -hmm. press monthly book club. They can sign up. If they're in America, basically they get free shipping. They get the free ebook with it. The book's sent out the first of the month and it arrives in the, you know uh, in their mail. But I really enjoy these books, Wayne, because for me, I I say this: it's not the fact that I love to write; it's the fact that I love to learn. And because I love to learn, I, I'm not. I don't want to be selfish. I want to take those gold nuggets that's impacted my life and give them out to everyone else, just like they should be doing as well. Hopefully, spreading their knowledge. And what they've learned throughout the day to the whole world as well. Well, you know, Jeremy, one thing you mentioned the book of Genesis, and I love this because one of the things that really resonates with me, especially in uh, you said we're always given or receiving the in the Genesis, it also says that every seed produces after its own kind. That's a that's a law. That's a biblical law. Oh, yeah. It's a law of nature. At the same time, so if 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 you plant a an apple seed, um, you can do whatever you want to. You can try, you can pray, you can, you can uh, do anything in the world to try to make it come up as a, uh, I don't know, a pear tree, but it's not because it produces after its own kind. So when, if we know that as a law, then it's what we take in. So am I reading your book on becoming the person that I want to become or that I'm called to become, or am I reading negative news? Because it's a seed coming in, either yep. way, the seed's going to produce yep. in the heart. And when I'm teaching, am I given a seed of knowledge, of wisdom, of revelation, of, of, of edification, or am I given a seed of negativity? And so if every seed produces after its own kind, I really believe we must take in the good seed. It's the whole adage. I remember Tony Robbins. I saw Tony oh, in, yeah. uh, in, uh, we were in Dallas the first time. And he said, I can look at this audience and tell you your rituals. I can tell you by looking at you. Some of you, hmm. some of you are vegans. Some of you are uh, you're health conscious. You exercise, you eat right. I can look at some of you until you had three Big Macs on the way here. You know, it just, <laughs> it, it shows because the heart yeah. comes from the yeah. seed. What we put in our body comes out of, will show in our body. And so the same thing when it comes to what we put in our mind, what we, what we concentrate on, what we focus upon, um, and I believe many people miss the power of the mind. You know, that's why I agree. I, that's why I call my program Neuro Persuasion. If you look at the neurological processes of the mind when it comes to influencing ourselves, influence other, changing ourselves, it's it is programming at the very core. But we've been programmed from society, from you know, good and bad. So we have to go in and, and really renew the mind or reprogram the mind. And I think mm -hmm. a book like yours. If somebody picks up a book every month and reads just one book a month, if you can write a book, they can read one, right? So if they there you read go. a book a month, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have people say, I don't have time to read, Wayne. Then you have to focus that time. Yeah, you know, you I know, agree. And, and that's where the change is really going to come. So I agree. I agree. You know, think about knowledge for a moment. I mean, think about how even the Bible says knowledge will increase in the earth. Think about the power of knowledge just for a moment. When we just take that in consideration, we realize, am I wasteful with what I'm learning or am I actually producing from that in which I'm learning? And for me, I look and I say, everything's a seed. If I learn something new that I'm going to call knowledge, that knowledge can become my wisdom after a while. Once, it's, once I sit on it and practice it, put it to the test, it's going to become wisdom to me. So I don't have the time to look at knowledge and be wasteful because I have to respect everything in this universe, in the sense of understanding everything in this universe that has been presented to me throughout every, my everyday living has come into my life for a reason. And I believe good, bad, or ugly, it's my duty, it's my job, it's my call to begin to consume definition or pull from whatever it is the situation is, pull from that and allow it to empower me. And here's a key thing. When we look at life, I hear in life coaching, all the time people say, I, you know, I wasted my two years on that man in a relationship. I wasted three years on that job. And I said, you know what? 
you did exactly. You, unfortunately, what you just said is your truth. You just wasted two years in a relationship when you could have been gaining really some God, powerful gold nuggets from a relationship you were in. And then two years later, when you're out of that relationship, you will understand nothing is wasted unless I choose to waste it. I said, I don't have time to look at my life and say, man, I've been you know, spending my time with you for six months and I wasted my time. I could have been doing something else. How do you know you could have been doing something else? If something is in your life at that moment, the, the, the power for you to learn from that situation is right there. And if you feel like you've wasted it, then you truly have wasted it. Or you can take from the situation and say, you know what? I learned now what a man should not be to me as a woman. I learned what a woman should not be from this person or should be. So guess what? I walk away empowered to say, I, I cannot, nothing in my life can ever be wasted because I choose not to allow the word waste to be a part of my vocabulary. I allow everything to say, life is my teacher. This situation is, is empower me for a reason because it's presenting itself to me today or maybe for the month or the year. So because of that, a year later, if she walks out of me, if he walks out of me, if I get fired from my job, guess what? No sweat off my back because obviously something now is heading in the in, the, in a better direction for me. But how am I guaranteed that it's going to be in a better direction? Because I choose to say this time with you or this time on this job has taught me so much. And it's awakened inside of me the things that I know that I do not want that I thought I wanted or the things now that I do want that I realize I didn't want. And guess what? I walk away saying, man, that was a great experience because guess what? I'm, an, I'm smarter now. So for me, when people say, you know, I, I don't have time to waste and I want God to bring me the right one, the right this, the right that. I'm like, God will always look at you and say, well, tell me about that experience that you just said was wasteful. Because if, if not, I'm going to have to hit the refresh button for you. You're going to have to start all over again because I need you to be enlightened. I need you to be a, in a place of awareness of what the situation or the person in your life is trying to show you or teach you. And yet unconsciously not even know they've been sent to you to be a teacher. Mm. So I don't look at people and say, you know, that was a bad relationship. This was a good one. I say, you know what, if it's presented itself to me in my life, then I've realized what, what am, what can I walk away with? Because I know if I, if I empower myself with wisdom from a situation, guess what, what do you think God's going to do? Good job, man. Look at you. You're smarter now through this situation. So yeah. automatically I'm going to be upgraded to something better because I learned to empower myself through it. And as we grow, think about it. As we grow, we're always going to grow into something better as long as we are growing. If we're not growing, then you're not going to grow into something better. Yeah, that's so, that's so true. That's so true. Back to what we take in. Are we taking in? Are we learning from an experience? Are we growing? What knowledge are we bringing in? And I think one of the most powerful concepts when people come in our coach and they're like, Hey, I want to make more money. Hey, I want to be a better, mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, I want to be a better business person. I want to be a better dad, whatever it is, is one of the first questions, not the first, but one of the first questions mm -hmm. I get into is what does your daily routine look like? And I'm, what I'm looking mm -hmm. for, I don't say, what are you studying? What are you reading? Cause they'll throw up some yeah. kind of you know, topic or something. Um, yeah. But what does your day look like? Because if you if you truly manage your day, what mm, you're yeah. consuming, how quick do you check that work email? How quick do you look at the news? What are you what are you focusing upon? And I'm not saying don't look mm -hmm. at something first. I look at I, I mean really after my time of prayer and meditation, one of the first things I look at is my uh, my stocks and investments. We were kind of joking about, but mm -hmm. I want to be aware of it. I want to see if something's going crazy. I need to look at. It. But that's yep. also important to me and my family. But today I'm reading a book um, on, uh, by Gary Kesey. I'm reading another book that I downloaded last night. And I'm going through my coach that's coaching me. I'm going through a program. So I know where I'm heading today, but I want to hear from everybody. Where are they heading? What are you studying? The person that says, Wayne, I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight. What are they studying? What knowledge do they have when it comes to a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, that's they're true. They're focusing on, I'm 50 pounds overweight. That's all they're focusing upon. And where the eye goes, their focus goes. They're focusing on, why am I overweight? And the unconscious is saying, well, here's why. <laughs> but we got to say, we got to refocus on, how do I become a healthier person? 
So true, man. So true. I so agree with you. You know, one of the things I think we also tend to forget about is, you know, a, a powerful principle that Gandhi once said, which is, you know, we've all pretty much heard it before, is be the change you, you wish to see in the world. And that statement alone has been backed up probably by geez, Jesus and so many other people, you know, great leaders, spiritual leaders, because it's a place where we look at ourselves to realize it's not the fact that I need instruction outside of me. It's not the fact I need knowledge outside of me. And what I mean by outside of me is this. Hey, you know what? I'm going to you know, call Wayne today, and I'm just going to just hear his knowledge. A lot of people in life, they're, they're too busy hearing what other people are saying as far as what they've learned, but they don't digest it to where it can become or, you know, their own revelation, their own knowledge, and they don't allow it to actually sort of sit on it for a while to say, how is that going to look for me right now? In other words, knowledge always changes us, period, no matter if it's good, bad, or ugly, right? So because of that, am I allowing it to, to come inside of me to see where it can sort of change the inside of me or alter something inside of me? You know, one of the things I really realized is when we deal with being the change, the idea is, how do we be the change? We're, we become the change when we begin to adapt our life to change. In other words, if I begin to say, uh, today I'm going to listen to a motivational speaker. I'm going to watch a YouTube video today by, you know, one of my greats, you know, Joe Vitale or, you know, Joel Osteen or, you know, uh, Rhonda Byrne, you know, who wrote The Secret. I mean, whoever the case may be, I want to just, I want to be able to feed my life by, with respect. And how do I respect my life? By learning something. And if I learn something today, then I can begin, begin to adapt it. And I would say, if someone learns something today, then see how it fits into your life. Where can you put it in there that can really make a, a, a damaging effect or a good effect? So to me, when we deal with be the change, it's the idea of the only way to be that change is to digest the knowledge, to become the knowledge, to allow knowledge outside of us to sort of bring us to a place where we, our minds are altered to not see people the same. When people ask me things such as, how do I know I'm changing? I said, here's how you know. When you look at your mother, you look at your wife, your husband, when you look at society, when you look at uh, you know, anything in the world through a different lens than you did before you read that knowledge, then you know truly that knowledge is changing you. Because if you think of, of something, let's say racism, which we know it's, it's like the elephant in the room half the time, and we hate it. We, we really do because we know that God's created everyone to be equal. But let's think about a person, for example, a white kid who, let's say, is a, is a, is a child and the parents are always embedding in them, you know, like, hey, don't trust black people or hey, black people don't trust white people, whatever the case may be. We, we know that they've become the change. Think about it. They've become the change or they don't have to become the change because if they allow the change of what, what has been taught to them to infiltrate their heart and then they become a byproduct of that and they begin to be racist, then we know in a negative way, if we think about it, then they have become the change. But then you see kids who say, I grew up in a home who my parents always said, don't trust this or don't trust that. And you can see where they didn't allow that to empower them to be what their parents said they, that they are, but they've allowed themselves to listen to what their parents have said or their peers and then take it and shift it how it should look for them. And so what do they do? They see their parents as being racist. They turn around, and they say, but you know what? I choose to take that knowledge that they gave me in a negative way, but I turn it, I turned it around for my good to say, wait a minute, what if that's showing me what not to be? So if you think about it, knowledge either way is going to change you. It's all depending on how you see it and how you want it to be able to adapt to your life. And, you know, and it really, that can help other people. So we're all faced every day with the idea of what do I want to do with knowledge? Absolutely. And, you know, here's a key also, a very friend of mine's a hypnotist and hypnotism is very, you know, in, in the Christian world, it's like, you know, they don't understand. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But truly it's just, a, it's a matter of just changing the way that we, um, our focus and our awareness. Uh, those who say hypnosis is evil and stuff, I'm sure it can be as anything mm. can be. Um, anything can. But also if you're staring at Netflix and you're zoomed out, your, your, your spouse is talking to you and you're like, what, what would you say? Cause you're entranced, you know, truly that's what the word entranced is. But, mm -hmm. but back to my point, hypnosis, he said, Wayne, if I'm trying to help somebody stop smoking, you know, they come to me, I want to stop smoking. I've smoked. I hate it. He said, if you, the reason hypnosis works so well in this is because I'm not telling them in trance that you will no longer smoke on the count of three or whatever. He said, that's, you know, that's Hollywood. He said, what I've got to get them to do is identify as a non-smoker. 
see a non-smoker just mm, doesn't yeah smoke. i'm I, i'm a non-smoker i don't i don't i don't go buy cigarettes or cigars or whatever and i don't yeah. smoke them just because it's not me so the moment your identity changes from i'm a smoker trying to quit there's struggle there's tension there's resistance but as soon as you go oh i'm a non-smoker the resistance can't be there and he said that's the real secret behind hypnosis mm. that's effect i love that so if you're someone that says you know what I, i'm having a hard time I, I don't learn well i don't read books good i hate to read it, it, you'll never gain the knowledge but if the moment you can say to yourself i'm one that acquires knowledge easily i'm a studier i'm a learner yeah i learn from others it's just that shift in your own consciousness then suddenly you become that person it's no different than somebody that looks at a piece of chocolate cake and says wow i love that i want that or somebody that looks at it and says oh wow do you know how many how much poison that is do you know the gluten and the and they, they and they see it and it it's just their their shift of their identity. I don't eat that poison. Oh, I can't wait to eat this cake. Um, That's I good. It shouldn't be poison, but you know what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> it, is <not laughs> uh, it really is identity. Uh, I recently, and I've, I've mentioned this on some of the podcasts, I recently went to a gluten-free uh, diet because of some gluten insensitivities. And more of a test, just a test to see, is this something that I need to do in my own body? And I tell you, Jeremy, just I realized really quick um, the massive change in my body. But it's now I'm starting to notice when I see that bread or I see that cake, I'm immediately going poison. I, I've identified it as poison to my body, maybe not to everybody. And so it's easy to say no when you realize this isn't for me. That's not, I don't eat that. I'm not a, gluten eater uh i'm not an alcoholic or whatever it may be some i'm not a smoker i'm a non yeah. so the identity but that also back to what you said about knowledge sometimes the knowledge will spark the identity sometimes the identity will draw the knowledge deep calls in the deep if i identify as one who learns then i'm my mind's my unconscious is going to say, well, you learn have you considered this and it's going to show you what you need i really believe they work in parallel together. I love that. You know, I, I love what you said because we have to remember, remember that we have the power to define it. We have the power to define anything we want to, you know, or choose to define. So I agree with you. When you look at chocolate cake to someone who doesn't see it as, let's say, being toxic or too much sugar or weight gain, someone can look at that and say, I'm going to call it this because this is what it does to me through my experience, through what I've been through. So I'm going to call it this to where, like you said, poison, because the truth is to some people, it is poison to some other people. They choose to, to see it as poison to where they can stay away from it. And then other people who say, man, I'm craving this. I'm depressed today. I'm craving that chocolate cake. Then they're, they're defining it as being their healer. And so we have to really, like you said before, we have to look at life and say, the choice is really up to you. How do you want to see life? How do you want to define life? Life can be bad for you or life can be good for you. And really you have that power in you to choose how you're going to see life, how you're going to see your body, yourself. You know, someone asked me a while back, they said, yeah, I've heard all that, you know, gratitude stuff, you know, like, you know, go through your day and at the end of the night, you know, just give gratitude, just, you know, be thankful. And I said, I said, I don't think you understand what that really means to this one gentleman. He said, well, I said, explain to me what it means for you. He said, well, you know, just, you know, go through my day. And I say, okay, God, thank you for a beautiful day today. I said, that's not gratitude. I said, if you think about gratitude, it said, here's the power of what gratitude does for you. When you go to bed at nighttime, or let's say throughout the day, and you choose to be aware, you choose to be conscious of your every moment of your life, which is really showing your life style respect. I said, and most people do not respect their life or the style of their living. So when they don't respect it, they'll never learn from it. So I said, so when we begin to go through our day in our place of being aware, walking in a state of awareness of what's going on to me, that I'm going to notice things I did not notice before because I, I wasn't aware before. But once I become aware of my life, then when I begin to give, let's say, God, gratitude or thankfulness, what happens is that gratitude pulls up a great memory for me that day, or maybe several memories. And guess what you're going to do? Because what you focus on expands, you're going to begin to expand on 
that maybe one or two or three great things or feelings that happened to you today. And when you focus on that by saying, hey, I'm really thankful, God, you know, for, you know, for meeting Sally today. I'm really thankful for this job you've given me. I'm thankful for a beautiful, you know, daughter or son. Then what happens is you pull it into your memory bank, to, you know, to the conscious mind that begins to grow and say, and I'm also really thankful for that child of God because I know they're going to be able to turn out, you know, this way. I'm just, I'm thankful for this new job because I can see in the future, it can bring me promotion. I can see where I'll be happier sitting at maybe that desk or being on the road. And so when you're grateful and you walk with awareness, then you're going to find things, not just points that made you happy, but you will find an experience. You will find a total brand new definition that will continue to grow to start or maybe, maybe to shift the style of your living. So gratitude to me is not just, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my job. Amen. It, gratitude to me is I'm going to pull something up. I've been aware of every moment today. I'm going to pull so many things up that came to, in my awareness and I'm going to see that and I'm going to acknowledge it. And I'm going to be able to speak on that note with my gratitude. So guess what? You didn't just give God thanks for a point. What you did was you pulled it up out of, out of inside of your subconscious and you began to elaborate on the good thing. And with that good thing, what happens? You begin to feel good. You know, and, and there's, there's nothing better than seeing, let's say your wife having a baby, you're in the delivery room and all of a sudden you will never forget that, that experience, that memory, but you're not going to forget it because a feeling was right there present with it. And you force yeah. yourself to be aware because I'm seeing this miracle happen. So for me, if you want to know who you are becoming in your life, you have to start with right now. You have to be aware right now. You have to begin to be aware, consciously aware of every moment and think about every moment and respect it. Because if you don't respect your every moment, you don't respect yourself. And if you don't respect yourself, you're never going to respect anyone else. So respect has to start with honoring the style of your living, honoring who you are, honoring who you meet, honoring whatever knowledge is presented to you that day, because it's a sign of respect. And I feel, I feel like in my life, I, don't, I will never live a life where I just go from day to day. I want to live a life where I respect every moment because every moment is, is, is bringing a new style of my living. And that has a lot there that I can say I am truly thankful for every moment of my life. And that is changing me because it's awakening me to show more of what I really am and what I have the potential to do and really who I am to myself and who I am to the people. You know, it's so amazing what you just said about gratitude. One of the things, so I'm going to jump back to Tony Robbins and sure. I, I learned this from Tony, but I've, I've added my own twist to it, but uh, really it's, it's priming. And that is priming the unconscious to be grateful and to prime the unconscious to look for things. And so a, a real quick example, if you watch a great movie, inspirational, you, you, you come out feeling inspirational. Uh, somebody watches um, a movie that's sad, it moves the emotions. And then everything from that for at least a few hours is filtered through that experience. So if you can begin your day with priming, for priming for me is, is a ritual. It's, it's every day in the shower. That's just my place where nobody's going to bother me. And, and my hand on my chest. And I think of three things, that not at once. One thing that I'm thankful for, that I'm gra grateful for. And here's the key, Jeremy. I don't, it's not always, I love my house, I love my car, I love my wife. Um, it could be, I'm grateful that I've got an interview with Lopez today. Mm -hmm. it can yep. be, and, I, and I take a moment, not just to say I'm thankful, but I focus on that experience and I look at the good in it and then I focus on something else. And it could literally be coffee. It could be whatever, you know, what am I thankful for? And I, and I always <laughs> really focus, I, I force myself to think outside of the, the surface level, family, friends, church, you know, and get into some, to some, some more granular things. And I do that one two three i take a few minutes with each and i really sit on that and then i just really uh, and i and then i what we call in um uh, pattern interrupt I, I literally then turn the cold water on or i i do something different to break my pattern because not that i don't yeah. want to stay in i don't here's the key it could literally just mean hop out of the shower it's not that i don't want to stay in gratitude i want gratitude to be already focused and already working for me the rest of the day is easier to find gratitude in things and it's just kind of priming uh people yeah. want to prime in a pump you want to prime your unconscious and that's why i choose to do it 
within the first 30 minutes of my day, sometimes in the first five minutes. Then as I'm, as I'm going to bed at night, I have a different ritual, which is, you know, we'll get into another time, but it's a different ritual that really does, I believe, allow the unconscious and allow God to speak into and give me instructions as I sleep. And it's been just amazing. But mm -hmm. it's what you said. And that's why, again, I'm going to go back to the title of the book. I, I'm really excited about the books that you've been bringing out because the, I know if people will take time to read and, and, and take that seed of knowledge in, so much is going to come out. So, Oh, man, I, I, I so agree with you. Any last thoughts on the book? I'd love anything else you'd love to share with us about the book. Yeah, um, actually, I would love to sort of talk for a moment about um, the fear of feelings because I think a lot of times we're scared to feel. This is one thing I incorporated in a couple of other books previously and in this one as well is we have to realize that when someone says to you or me in, in our sessions of, of life coaching, they say, I don't want to fall in love again because I fell in love with him. I fell in love with her. And that, you know, and I just got so enthralled in it, the feeling of it. And I don't want to feel that again because I'll be hurt. Or I'll be let down. And one thing I really would encourage people to do is if that's really where people are right now at that place where, you know, they feel like I don't want to feel again because I'm scared I'll get hurt or I'm scared of a let down. The key thing for me is this, is if you're in a brand new relationship, I would say this, don't sit here and find that feeling within that person. I would say, find the feeling of, you know what? I'm loved today. You know, this person has brought an opportunity to me that I, that proves to me that I am loved period. You know, this job opens a door for me to realize that I am smart and I'm being employed today. Don't, in other words, if you make it, if you make it bigger, as opposed to sort of honing in straight on that one person or that one job, then you're not going to set yourself up to be, to be hurt because what's going to happen is you, you will look back, even if that relationship fails or the job fails, you'll look back and say, you know what? My happiness was not within them. My happiness was not within the job. My happiness, my joy, that feeling I had was the fact that that proves to me that I am totally loved. And if it happened once, it can happen again. You know, I think people are afraid to feel because of rejection, abandonment, hurt, because so-and-so in the past hurt me. I got fired on my, on my last job. But we got to learn to understand that the idea is if someone, anyone comes into your life that wants to show you love or kindness, that alone should prove to you that guess what? I am worthy of, of kindness. I'm worthy of love. I and, and that way, don't make it so pointed to that one person to where if something happens, they're not going to close off again. So I always say anything that happens in that day, and this is one thing I share in the book, anything that happens that day, be thankful and bring it to a, maybe a huge, broader perspective. Because if it happened once to you folks, it can happen again and again and again and again, which is a good thing. And so I would encourage people to really maybe think about that in the place of gratitude, because finding yourself is really living out your day of self-awareness and really seeing and examining like what if everything is helping me to awaken to see really what I really can do and awaken me who I really am and awaken that there's so much in me. I'll, I'll sort of close with this too for you, Wayne. If you think about everything that goes through your day, everything that's presented to you in your day, what is life, we'll say, God, what is life coming to you? What is life showing you in your busyness? It's showing you that you were chosen to be busy and whatever, whatever comes to your life that day, because you're the one that can take the heat. You're the one that can solve the problem. You're the one that can Good. prove this right. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the key thing. It's like everything showing you that it's chosen you because you can handle it and you're going to be the best at dealing with the situation up front. That is an amazing, uh, number one, I think it's the truth. I think it's a reality from God. And number two, it's an amazing way to, to, um, I guess you would say reframe a bad situation. This is happening. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because most people go, why me? Why the hell is this happening to me? And yep. maybe it's not why in hell is it happening to you, but why in the divineness of a good God is this happening to you? Why is this? Um, why have you been chosen for such a time as this in a situation such as this? Now, I do True. believe as long as, as long as I'll preface that with, as, as long as that uh, is not in self-sabotage, which is another whole podcast. So true. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, brother, I wanted, again, on behalf of everybody listening, uh, and guys, if you're listening, jump over to identitynetwork.net, hot off the press club, and sign up, get that. Check out Jeremy coaching um, and, and just all of his resources. 
And Jeremy, thank you again for being on. I really, more than you know, appreciate it. Really do. Oh, man. Hey, it's been my honor to be with you guys. It really has been. And guys, I want to say this. Uh, if you are open, we have, as of this recording, I know we podcast, I don't like always give time sensitive material because people can hear it years from now. But as of this recording, we have two spots left open for our private one on one neuro persuasion coaching with myself. I only work with a handful of clients at any time on a one on one basis. Uh, but if you're looking and you really want to know the knowledge, the secrets, the, the platform to influence yourself, influence others, and then go impact the world, I would love to connect with you. Let's hop on a call, see if it's for you. If, it's, if it is, great. If it's not, that's okay too. And of course, yourpersuasioncoach.com, all of our articles, podcasts, videos, and so much more you can pick up there as well. And of course, again, I want to mention identitynetwork.net for Jeremy and uh, all of his resources as well. Guys, make it a great day. Go out there, change the world, get wealthy doing it, have fun, and be blessed. Go to yourpersuasioncoach.com for more powerful resources on how to influence yourself, influence others, and impact the world.